On January 16, 1938, swing jazz music has its highbrow coming out party at Carnegie Hall with a concert featuring big band sensation Benny Goodman. Today is January 16, 2024, and I would like to bring you this day in history. Jazz has been called America's classical music, a label that does more than just recognize its American origins. The label also makes the case that jazz is worthy of aesthetic consideration alongside music usually thought of as classical. In the current era when programs of Duke Ellington and J.S. Bach often drawed some highbrow crowds, the argument hardly seemed controversial. In the 1930s, however, the notion was almost laughable, which is what made Benny Goodman's January 16, 1938 concert at Carnegie Hall at New York's famed Carnegie Hall so revolutionary. Goodman and his supporting cast claimed a new place for jazz on the American culture scene that night in what has become in what has come to be seen as the most important jazz concert in history. This concert wasn't technic technically the first jazz presentation at Carnegie Hall. In 1912, Harlem band leader James Reith Europe James Reese Europe and his Clef Club Orchestra made a historic debut with their concert of Negro music, which brought ragtime blues and an integrated audience to the famed hall to the famed concert hall for the first time. Benny Goodman, a white band leader popular for his swing dance repertoire, was the absolute height of his legendary career when his publicists first suggested they book Carnegie Hall. He was a star on the radio, on stage, and on film, and the label King of the Swing was already attached permanently to his name. So outlandish was the suggestion that a jazz band might play inside the citadel of American high culture, however, that Goodman said that Goodman is said to have laughed the idea off at first. Once he warned once he warmed up to the notion, however, Goodman threw himself into the task with characteristic passion. In addition to numbers from the regular repertoire of his own band, which included legendary Harry James on trumpet, Lionel Hampton on vibraphone, and Gene Kupla on drums, Goodman planned a program featuring a brand new 20 Years of Swing piece and and an extension extended and an extended jam session featuring stars of the Duke Ellington and Count Basie orchestras. The concert sold out weeks in advance with the best seats fetching two dollars and seventy five cents. It would be another decade before anyone who was not in the audience or listening on the radio that night would hear the famed concert. All recordings of the show were presumed, presumed lost until Goodman's sister-in-law came across a set of acetates in 1950. By then the performance had already become the stuff of legends, particularly the stunning unplanned piano solo by Jess Stacy on Sing Sing Sing, the evening's final number. The album made from the recovered acetates becomes one of the first 33 and a third LPs 
to sell over a million copies. The eventual discovery of the aluminum stereo master recordings held to high quality CD reissued in 1998, 2002, and 2006 of the legendary Carnegie Hall Jazz Concert. Now I'd like to bring you yet another This Day in History. Faced with it, faced with an army mutiny and violent demonstrations against his rule, Muhammad Rizi Shah Pahlavi, the leader of Iran since 1941, is forced to flee the country. Fourteen days later, Alatola Rahmad Khomeini, the spiritual leader leader of the Islamic Revolution returned after 15 years of exile and took control of Iran. In 1941, British and Soviet troops occupied Iran and the first Pahlavi Shah who they regarded with suspicion was forced to abdicate in favor of his son Mohammad Risa. The new Shah promised to act as a constitutional monarch, but often meddled in the elected government affairs. After a communist pilot against him was thrown in 1949, he took on even more powers. However, in early 1950s, the Shah was eclipsed by Mohammad Mossadegh a zealous Iranian nationalist who converted the parliament to nationals British extended oil interest in Iran. Mohammad Reza, who maintained close relations with Britain and the United States, opposed the decision. Nevertheless, he was forced in 1951 to appoint Mossadegh premier and two days and two years of tension followed. In August 1953, Mohammad Reza attempted to dis mo dismiss Mossadegh, but the premier popular support, but the premier's popular support was so great that the Shah himself was forced out of Iran. A few days later, British and U.S. intelligence agents orchestrated a stunning coup debted against Masadak, and the Shah returned to take power as sole leader of Iran. He replaced Masadak's legislation and became a close Cold War ally of the United States and the Middle East. In 1963, the Shah launched his White Revolution, a broad government program included land reform, infrastructure development, voting rights, voting rights for women, and the reduction of illiteracy. Although these programs were applauded by many in Iran, Islamic leaders were crucial of what they saw as the westernization of Iran. Rohala Khomeini a Shiite Kurlik was particularly vocal in his criticism and called for the overthrow of the Shah and the establishment of an Islamic state. In 1964, Khomeini was exiled and settled across the border in Iraq, and he, where he sent radio messages to incite his supporters. The Shah saw himself foremost as a Persian king and in 1971 held an extravagant celebration of the 2500th anniversary of pre-Islamic Persian monarch. In 1976, he formally replaced the Islamic calendar with the Persian calendar. Religious discontent grew and the Shah became more repressive using his brutal secret police force to 
suppress oppression. This alienated students and intellects in Iran and support for Khomeini grew. Discontent was also rampant in poor and middle class who felt that the economic development of the white revolution had only benefited the ruling elite. In 1978, anti-Shah demonstrations broke out in Iran's major cities. On September 8, 1978, the Shah's security force fired on large groups of demonstrators, killing hundreds and wounding thousands. Two months later, thousands took to the streets in Tehran, rioting and destroying symbols of westernization, such as banks and liquor stores. Khomeini called for the Shah's immediate overthrow, and on December 11th, a group of soldiers mutinied and attacked the Shah's security office. With that, his regime collapsed and the Shah fled. The Shah, traveled, the Shah traveled to several countries before entering the United States in October 1979 for medical treatment of his cancer. In Tehran, Islamic militants responded on November 4th by storming the U.S. Embassy and taking staff hostage. With the approval of Khomeini, the militants demanded the return of the Shah to Iran to stand trial for his crimes. The United States refused to negotiate and 52 American hostages were held for 444 days. Mohammad Risha Shah Pahlavi died in Egypt in July 1980. Now I'd like to bring you yet another this day in history. At midnight in Iraq, the United Nations deadline for Iraqi withdrawal from Kuwait expires, and the Pentagon prepares to commence offensive operations to forcibly eject Iraq from its five-month occupation of its oil-rich neighbor. At 4 p.m. Eastern Time, the first fighter aircraft were launched from Saudi Arabia and off U.S. and British aircraft carriers in the Persian Gulf on bombing mission over Iraq. All evening, aircraft from U.S.-led military coalition pounded targets in and around Baghdad as the world watched the event transpire in television footage transmitted live satellite from Baghdad and elsewhere. At 7 o'clock p.m., Operation Desert Storm, the code name for the massive U.S.-led offensive against Iraq, was formally announced at the White House. The operation was conducted by an international coalition under command of U.S. General Norman Schwarzkopf and featured focus from 32 nations including Britain, Egypt, France, Saudi Arabia, and Kuwait. During the next six weeks, the Allied force engages, engaged in a massive air war against Iraq's military and civil infrastructure and encountered little effective resistance from Iraqi air force or air defense. Iraq ground forces were helpless during this stage of war and Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein only significant retaliation measure was to launch was the launching of Scud missiles against Israel and Saudi Arabia. Saddam hoped that the missile attack would provoke Israel to enter the conflict, thus dissolving Arab support for the war. At the request of the United States, however, Israel remained out of the war. On February 24th, a massive coalition ground offense began and Iraq's outdated and poorly supplied army, armed forces, and poorly supplied armed forces were 
rapidly overwhelmed. Kuwait was liberated in less than four days and a majority of Iraq's armed forces surrendered, retreated to Iraq, or were destroyed. On February 28th, President George H. W. Bush declared a ceasefire and Iraq pledged to honor future coalitions and the UN peace terms. 125 American soldiers were killed in the Persian Gulf War, with another 21 regarded as missing in action. On March 20th, 2003, a second war between Iraq and U.S.-led coalition began, this time with the United States objective of removing Saddam Hussein from power and ostensibly finding and destroying the country's weapons of mass destruction. Hussein was captured by the U.S. military unit on December 13, 2003, and was executed three years later. No weapons of mass destruction were ever found. I want to thank you for watching today, and as always, stay safe and stay blessed. And remember to smile because I love you, but more importantly, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ loves you. And that's the best love you can have. If you like the content of this video, please give it a th thumbs up and comment down below. Those two things really help my channel. But what really helps me out is if you subscribe. Yeah, it's free. What are you waiting for? Come on over and join our little serendipity subby family. I'm shooting for that 1K mark and I'm really close. And I sure would appreciate your subscription. All right, everybody, have a blessed day, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, everybody.